As the Apostle Peter addressed the crowd on the day of Pentecost, he boldly declared in Acts chapter 2 and verse 22, and I quote, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and signs and wonders, which God did by him in the midst of you. We believe in miracles and that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. The days of miracles are not over. Jesus is still in the miracle business. Wherever you are at this time, the Moriah Miracle Center welcomes you to this, the Miracle Hour broadcast. It is time for your miracle. Today is the day of miracles. Today is the day for your miracle. We invite you now to stay tuned and be blessed. A miracle awaits you. Praise the Lord. Greetings in the precious name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is indeed a privilege to come to you once again over this network as we present to you the unchanging Christ to the changing world, the living Christ to the dying world. It's amazing. It's about two years ago, this same Holy Thursday, we had our first program right here on TIN. And God has been good to us. In fact, we are celebrating our second anniversary. And we know that God indeed has been a blessing. And we know indeed that God has moved by his spirit and he has touched many hearts and many lives through this network as a result of this program. I want to encourage you, continue praying for us. Continue believing the Lord. Continue viewing it. It is as a result of your presence your prayers, your input, your viewership, why we are still on the air. And we give God praise and we give God thanks for this. I'm Pastor McCall and you're watching the Miracle Hour broadcast. It is time for your miracle. And I believe with all my heart that God has a miracle in store for you because the God whom we serve is not dead. He is alive. And he's still moving by his spirit. Why not call someone and let them know that the miracle hour is being aired at this time. And a miracle awaits them. This program comes courtesy the pastors and members of the Moriah Miracle Center. And we are situated at number 119 North Side Road, Moriah, Tobago. I encourage you to join us any Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. in our Christian Education Hour. This is followed by our worship and celebration service at 9.30. And come let us worship the Lord together in the beauty of His holiness. The scripture tells us wheresoever the two or three are gathered together in His name, He is in the midst. So God is in our midst and God is pouring out of His Spirit. So you do not have a home church. You don't have a fixed place where you go to worship. Maybe on a Sunday you just chill. Why not come and join us any Sunday morning? We'll be glad to have you. In fact, do not turn up this Sunday at 9.30 because this Sunday, Easter Sunday, we have our sunrise service and that begins at 7 o'clock. Only this Sunday, Easter Sunday, we begin at 7 a.m. But all the other Sundays, our time is at 9.30 a.m. I extend an invitation to you to come and join us. You can also join us on Tuesdays for prayer and Bible study, which commences at 7. 
and then on the second and the fourth Sundays of each month, the young people meet for their program and their meeting time is at 6 p.m. So come and join us. A warm welcome awaits you. I'll be back in a while again to share with you from the word of Almighty God. So call a friend and let them know that the miracle hour is being aired at this time and that a miracle awaits them. I will be back in a short while to share with you from the word of Almighty God. God bless you as you stay tuned. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you for staying with us. And those of you who have just joined us, we welcome you. You are viewing the Miracle Hour broadcast. It is time for your miracle. Today, I want to share with you. I want to encourage someone's heart. And I want to share with you from the book of Acts chapter 27. And I want to commence my reading at the 21st verse. And I'll proceed on to verse 26. So it's Acts chapter 27, verses 21 to 26. Let's read the word of Almighty God at this time. But after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me, and not to have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And, lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it? How be it? We must be cast upon a certain island. And I will just want to read for emphasis verse 22. Because there is our focus of attention. And now I exhort you, be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. You are valuable. You are important important to God. The scripture gives us the pity of the Apostle Paul and his companions as they sailed from Jerusalem on their journey to Rome. And the scripture tells us that while they were sailing a storm arose, the Euroclidon. And they were driven up and down for many years, days. Sorry, I almost said years, many days. And as a result of the situation which they found themselves in, all hope that they should be saved was taken away. And the Bible tells us in the midst of the chaos and in the midst of knowing that their lives are in danger the apostle paul stood up and he made a statement and he made the statement based upon what he would have received or what he would have encountered previously and what he would have received or what he would have encountered before he made that statement was god the almighty dispatched an angel right there in the ship and the angel brought a word to the apostle paul and the word which the angel brought to the apostle paul from almighty god was be of good cheer no one is going to lose his or her life there will be loss but there will be only loss of the ship only the ship will be lost. And it's there I want to zero in in this society. There is where I want to zero in today and bring to our attention, ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are viewing me, that listen, you are valuable 
and that you are important. Glory to God. You see, we got to tell ourselves that I am precious in the sight of God. I am of worth. Men's opinion of me may be not exactly what God has said about me or what God declares about me, but in the eyes of God, I am valuable. In the eyes of God, I am precious. In the eyes of God, I am of worth. So God comes to Paul and God says to Paul through the angel, no one is going to lose their life. No life will be lost, but the ship will be lost. In other words, God placed much more emphasis on the lives of the people who were in the ship than the ship itself. And that is wonderful. And I want to say to you today why you are important. Let me draw you to some things that the scripture has declared. You are the crown of God's creation. You are the crown of God's creation. You see, when God created the world, the Bible tells us in Genesis, the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. And out of chaos, order came. And as order came, God began to speak. Let there be light. And there was light. Let the earth bring forth after its kind. And God spoke into being what he wanted the earth to bring forth. Creeping things and cattle. And let there be fowls in the air. And the cattle and the fowls of the air appeared. God said, let there be waters. Let there be living creatures in the waters. And the fishes and all there in the sea came into being. After God would have done all of that, God comes and he said, let us make man. Genesis 1.26. In our image, and have the own life. So it means then that you are the crown of God's creation. The psalmist picks it up in Psalm 8. And he said, listen man, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Listen, you are important to God. The psalmist also picks it up in Psalm 139. And the 14th verse. When he says, I am wonderful and I'm fearfully made by the hand of Almighty God, I'm going to praise God. So I'm saying to you today, sir, you are the crown of God's creation. So you are important. Look around you. You may be in the comfort of your living room. You may be driving down the highway or wherever you are. And you may be looking at this or hearing my voice, wheresoever you are, look around and your surroundings and all that you can see. You are more important to God than all that you can see. Secondly, I want to say to you today, you are not an accident. Don't let people think that, listen, you are an accident. Well, boy, or maybe your parents telling you, well, you know, we really didn't want to have another child. But lo and behold, it happened, and then you have arrived. No, 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 you're not an accident. And mommy or daddy were not planning to have another baby, and lo and behold, I came into the world. And No, no, you're not an accident. You are here by divine design, and there's a divine purpose for your life. The Bible tells us, in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, when God called Jeremiah, and Jeremiah began making excuse or excuses. God said, listen, before I formed you and knew you, and before you came out of your mother's womb, I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nation. So God operates according to purpose. God is a God of purpose. God does not do something. And after he does it, 
wonder why he did it. And when he's finished, it will seem to me, he says, it will seem to me like I have made a mistake. When God does something, there's a purpose. There's a reason why God does it. God does everything for his honor and for his glory. So you have to look around now, sir. And you're going to tell yourself, I am in this world. And I am in this world to bring honor and glory to Almighty God. And if God does everything for his honor and for his glory, it means then that your existence and my existence, it, they have to be important to God. It is important to God. And God wants you to live a life so that, listen, he will be glorified by everything you say and everything you do. So you are not an accident. Men may discard you, and that happens. Men may want to tell you and cause you to feel that you are not important and you are not of worth and you are not valuable. valuable. In fact, they may even treat you that way. Some folks may tell you that in, right in front of your face. And you may feel, as we will say, maybe a how you may feel, you know, disappointed, and you may be feel, you know, that you, 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 are, you, are total you are total disregard and you are total reject. No, 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 no. In the eyes of God, you are someone of worth. So hear what God says to Jeremiah before I formed you. So Jeremiah's mother and father didn't form him. God is the one who brought him into being. He said, before I formed you, I ordained you. Hallelujah. And before you came out, I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nation. So I want to declare to you, I want to declare to you today, from the word of Almighty God, that you are not an accident. But from the word of Almighty God, you are here to fulfill divine purpose. That's why Samson was born. Samson was born according to Judges. The Bible said God came to Samson's mother and God said to her, listen, you are going to conceive and you're going to have a child. And let me tell you something, that child shall rise to deliver Israel from the Philistines. So therefore, then God, God is a God of purpose. So therefore, then you need to know the purpose why you are existing. Now, Satan cannot change purpose. He may try to distract you from your purpose, but the purpose of which you have come into this world, which God has ordained and designed. You understand me? Listen, the enemy will want to distract you from that, but you got to live for the Lord and submit your life to the Lord so that God's purpose for your life can be fulfilled upon planet Earth. So therefore, you are valuable. Valuable. You are important. You are someone of worth. I want to repeat myself. You are valuable. You are important. You are someone of worth. God said to Paul, yes, I know that your lives are in, in, in great danger because you all are tossed to and fro in this storm. But I want to assure you, not one life will be lost. Not one life will be lost. The ship will be lost because the lives on board the ship are more important to me than the ship itself. So therefore then, I'm saying to you that listen, you are not an accident. And as a human being, you are the crown of God's creation. Let me draw another thing to you today. You are more valuable than things. I want to make a statement. Permit me to make this statement, and I'm, I want to read it to you. Your sense of worth and your preciousness does not come from the opinions of others, either from some elite group of evaluators, but your sense of worth comes from Almighty God. And I want you to understand that. So it's not man's opinion of who you are where you get your self-word from. It's not a group of valuators who sit down and weigh and value and come up 
with some valuation. And then you realize, well, listen, yeah, boy, I'm somebody, you know. It does not come from Hollywood neither. But your sense of wood comes from Almighty God. That's why the psalmist, as I said before, in Psalm chapter 8, cries out, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Let me tell you something. In the eyes of God, you are important. Jesus loves you. That's my next point. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 tells us, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. St. John chapter 15 and verse 13 declares, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. Come on, man. It's as a result of God's love for you and me why Jesus Christ died. It's as a result of God's love. That's why we are celebrating. We are celebrating the Easter season because Jesus Christ was willing to lay down his life for his friends. If you read Romans chapter 5, verse 5 and 6 tells us, and 7, he said, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet part venture for a good man, some would even dare to die. How many of you looking at me now will be willing to die for someone else whom you do not know, total stranger, your enemy? But the Bible said, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, rebellious, sinful, Christ Jesus died for us. That's why I say to you, you are valuable. Now, how you treat yourself, what you think of yourself, how you feel about yourself is also important. But I know from the word of God, God sees you as being valuable. That's why Jesus Christ died for you. Yeah, you may have a broken relationship. Your family members may have discarded you. Your friends and those whom you really rode with once, they are no longer riding with you now because of maybe, I don't know what would have happened, but in the eyes of God, you are valuable. And I want to say to you today, sir, I want to say to you, young woman, don't waste your life. Life is precious and life is worth living because Jesus Christ has come to give you life and to give you this life more abundantly. St. John chapter 10 and verse 10, that's what the scripture says. The thief, which is the devil, he comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy. But Jesus Christ has come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. So you have to embrace this abundant life today. You got to understand now, listen, hey, I am valuable in the sight of Almighty God. That's why Jesus Christ came to die for me. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit down and allow the opinions of others? Are you going to sit down and allow the valuation of others? Are you going to sit down and allow the statements that others have made about you to cause you to come to that place, to live in accordance to what they think and what they feel and how they describe you, or you are going to come to the place to understand what God's word says about you. And God's word says that you are precious. So precious that, so precious are you in the sight of Almighty God. That listen, that Jesus Christ left the portals of glory and came to earth and walked the streets and died for you so that you can be free. That's why he said, him that cometh unto me, I will no wise cast out. So listen to me today, friend. As you look at this program, I want to let you know that God loves you and that you are someone of worth and that you are precious in the eyes of Almighty God. Regardless of what you have said and what you have done and where you have been and what 
whatsoever. I, I, and I don't you need to really iterate, reiterate, or to itemize it, man. God loves you. God loves you, and you are someone of worth. People may have discarded you, but that's people. Man does not have the last say. God has the last say. So Paul got encouragement from God. And God said, the ship will be lost, but your life will be saved. And whatsoever you have, you can lose it. But your life, because the scripture said, what shall it profit you if you shall gain the whole world and lose your soul? And I'll leave you with this verse. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. So your life is in Christ because he who had the Son had life and he who had not the Son of God had not life. What is your verdict? What is your decision rather today? Are you going to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Are you going to ask him to come into your heart? Let's pray at this time. Say, Lord Jesus, I humble bow in your presence and I realize that you died for me. I'm a creature of worth. I am precious. I am important. So I ask of you to cleanse me from my sin. Wash me thoroughly in your blood. Make me a new creature. And help me, Lord Jesus, to live for you and to serve you in spirit and in truth all the days of my life. I thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for those of you who are not well and need a miracle healing. Father, in the name of Jesus, all those who are sick and are believing you for a touch, stretch your hand towards them right now in the name of Jesus and heal them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. I speak it right now in the name of Jesus from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Heal them in the name of Jesus. I rebuke sickness and diseases in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for a miracle. And I believe you. And I say it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll be back again next week in the will of the Lord. And as I usually say, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. For with God, nothing is impossible. You are just one step away from your miracle. God bless you. Shalom. My God is Song that says this, I got is awesome.